Hey guys and welcome to this review of the Pella MD450 Dasso Uragan, or Hurricane as it's known in English, and this is a bit of a big one. The Uragan is uh, the first French mass-produced aircraft, the French designed aircraft should I say, and it's uh, quite a quite an important aircraft in French aviation. Its legacy stretches on to this day really. I mean you can see the influence of the older French designs, the sort of World War II era designs in this sort of uh, relatively new post-war post aircraft. It emerged just after World War II and it went on to have massive influence on the Mister 4, which later became the Mirage line. So really, up until today, this aircraft, it, it's like as he lives on, you know, this is a massively important aircraft. The kit that you get, you can make four different schemes from. So you can make two French schemes, an Israeli scheme, and you can also make a scheme for India. The one we've chosen is one of the two French schemes. There's a standard one and there's the uh, La Patrouille de France uh, of the Army de l'Air. And uh, we chose that because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do all of the uh, Patrouille de France uh, aircraft. I was going to do them in historical order. I've actually got the F-84 right next to me now to build. Not built yet, but that's the next one on the list. Uh, but I had to get decals for it, so I couldn't do them in chronological order. After this, they will be. And I will be redoing my Fuga that I visited earlier on. Hmm. But yes, this is the uh, Dasso MD450 Uragan. And as I said, it got exported to three other air, air forces around the world, which is India, Israel and uh, El Salvador as well. So quite the international girl, this aircraft. Now the kit itself you can see is really straightforward. Uh, it's <laughs> It comes in this really weird color. I don't know why, because other than like, I think the Israeli scheme, it doesn't really help. It's this like gross tan color. Just reminds me of like the tan colored army men. So it, it's fine. <laughs> It's the simplest aircraft I've ever put together though, like in terms of whether or not this would be sort of an experienced builder or an intermediate or a beginner, anything from beginner upwards. This could be your first model kit and honestly I think you'd find it an absolute breeze. I have never ever built an aircraft kit that's easier in my life. As I'm touching the landing gear though, we'd like to point out, as is tradition with Hella kits, the landing gear is atrocious. <laughs> I have never ever built something with landing gear as flimsy as this and I've built Alpha Jets and Alpha Jets are notorious for their bad landing gear but no this was this was bad guys it was it was really bad and I apologize that the camera cut out once or twice and um, I've recently moved everything around so my webcam is set up somewhere slightly different as well for um the actual like model building section and I did disconnect it once or twice in error because I need to get some tape and Stick everything in the right places because I've moved my computer, which means I can stream a lot better, particularly when playing things like War Thunder. So if you're into that sort of thing, head over to uh, Ms. Modeler on Twitch. And, you know, we've got the Discord as well, which is in the description. You can play with us. Uh, we're a really inclusive community, so love to see you there. So in terms of painting, this aircraft is really, really straightforward. And there wasn't a lot to talk about in construction, so that's why we've sort of glossed over it. It's literally a cockpit, stick like five other parts together and you're done. <laughs> it's like a really, really, really easy thing to do. Now, I bought this kit, and um, the kit that again I got, it's a complete kit, but it came in the Dasso 100 Years of Aviation. It's a couple of years old, and I had paints with it, and they did not work. So I ended up using the Revell paints, the Revell equivalents, and they work beautifully. Um, so I've done a coat of aluminium across the whole thing. Now, I did do something a bit different later on, we'll see. But essentially, it's just a coat of uh, aluminium across the whole thing. Then on the sort of wing tips and on the tail section itself, it's a mixture of uh, Revell Lufthansa Blue and their standard blue colour. And that's to get the really weirdly unique colour for the Patou de France. In terms of reference material, I saw a few different things and it makes it kind of difficult to know what to do. So when I looked at the instructions, it seemed to suggest black was the paint that it was using on the tail section and the wingtips, and that doesn't seem right. So then I looked online and there were some that were like this sort of like creamy, almost edging towards like a baby blue, 
sort of color, almost a tealy, like it was, it was odd. And then some of them were like a really dark blue, almost like the Lufthansa blue. So what I started with originally was actually painting it Lufthansa blue. And then it just didn't look right. I was sat sort of on my computer just, just here and I was just like, God, that doesn't look right. So I did a really thin layer of like standard blue on top of it. And I was like, it still doesn't seem right. So then I went back and did a mixture of Lufthansa blue and standard blue. I didn't, I didn't have a ratio. I'll be really honest with you. I feel like it was probably about uh, five to two in favor of the standard blue. So it darkens the blue quite a lot. Uh, in terms of the, the other detailing on the model, um, and you'll see it, you won't actually see me put it on, but what I decided to do that I've never done before is I put on some weathering powders and God. This was like really scary. I, I always never put it on because I'm scared of ruining my models, but I thought, you know what? This is a relatively inexpensive and easy to make model. If I fuck it up whilst I'm, you know, before I do any of the decals or anything, it's not the end of the world. So I used, it was just a standard Ravel, again, uh, weathering powder kit. And I mainly use, a, I think it's a black and a rusted color. And I use them around the engine section, around the front engine intake, and around the wings to try and give it more depth. Because giving it a standard aluminium coating on its own, I don't know, like, there's just something about standard aluminium that just feels kind of, again, in a lane. You know, it just doesn't, it feels too new. Particularly with, like, an aerobatic aircraft. We always do them really, really clean, but they tend to be, like, not red. Uh, sorry, not red. Not, not, not aluminium. They'll be like red or blue or something else but when then these raw metal colors i sort of want to see aging more i feel like i expect to see aging more on the aircraft and see that it's been used and you know these aircraft can be combat used if they need to be so i did put some stuff around the guns as well to try and make it look like that they may have been fired at one point or another so i don't know i just i just tried to do something different i think it worked in the end so, decals. <sighs> I try to be really, really tactical about this. Now, I, I want to say straight off the bat, hella decals are normally my bane like, of existence. I normally really struggle with them. This kit cannot fold them. They worked amazingly. They were durable enough that I can pull them around. They were um, like quite resilient. They have really good color quality. So. I'll hold my hands up. I, I, I've slated them in the past, but my god, I loved them this time. They were really easy to fit together, like, and put on the kit. I started off with the sides. I tried to be quite tactical on how I did it because, really, I wanted to be able to hold the tail as long as possible because it's, like, a really easy way to, you know, hold the model. Um, and I just tried to make them as symmetrical as possible for the sides because, I, I don't know, they're the most prominent bit other than the stars. <laughs> God, we'll get to the stars in a bit, don't you worry, honeys. <laughs> so yeah, I started off by doing the, um, the, the the sides of the fuselage, then did the uh, the wings themselves with the uh, two French uh, Air Force Randalls. And again, they were really easy to do. Um, it's not really clear on the instructions where things go. And in fact, you're even gonna hear a section now where I basically realized it doesn't tell you where to put the wing tick section at all. Like, there's no indication of where anything goes whatsoever. And you know what? It doesn't really even tell you. <sighs> Just really, really frustrating. So 48 and 47 are at the top here. So we can ignore those ones. I mean, I'm guessing it's like 45, 44. I just don't understand why there's no other explanation of it. It seems really, really odd really lazy to be honest. So anything above 48 is not for that. 
there's a lot of them still that apply for that. That's appalling. I was horrified, I'm not gonna lie to you. Clearly, I was absolutely flummoxed and I just decided to do a process of elimination. I would do all the star bits that were numbered, but as you can see, there's a lot of them. <laughs> it's not like a, sh a small feat. There are a lot of them, but I tried to do all the ones that were numbered first in order to make sure that I narrowed down the amount of errors that could have been made <laughs> and it, it, it worked in, in, in the end you know it did work I did manage to reduce it down quite significantly to a point where I was comfortable but it just it wasn't the best experience like just looking at the instructions and just it basically saying put stars here and it, it was genuinely kind of a struggle in the end now these tail bits I want to say I'm glad I painted white underneath because they look gorgeous like white on top of any other colour shows through so they would have been slightly blue tinged or whatever but having the white underneath means that the white really pops along with the red and I'm so happy with it like I honestly think it looks freaking beautiful oh yeah and I had a kid of white I will totally ignore that <laughs> After I'd uh, done that, I, I decided to start doing the stars and I think that's why I was starting to go off camera because I was trying to work out what goes on where and because I was literally just following a black and white image that was not three dimensional, I found it quite difficult. <laughs> now the, the end result I think looks okay, but it doesn't look fantastic, I'll be honest. Um, I, I've noticed a few areas now where I did wrong, I've noticed a few bits that I probably put on the wrong place but it didn't tell me how to do it so yeah whether it does in the standard Uruguay kit no idea this was in as I say the 100 years of that's aviation but I'm pretty sure that kit just has everything from the standard kits thrown into one I will say I did get given a hella brush in that collection I have used it hella brush for some reason seems a lot nicer than the Airfix brush and I will be using quite regularly I use it to paint the entirety of this model mostly i think i used like a flat brush in order to try and get some of the edges done um but otherwise yeah used the hella brush and it worked really well so i'm not going to complain about that the paints were all dried up i'm i'm assuming that was age i initially in the stream complained um that it was just the paints themselves but i'm pretty sure it was age more than anything you can sort of see the kits coming together here now the stars are mostly done and I think it looks great, you know, I used water to move them around and then what I did was I dropped decal fix on top of that in order to make sure they fit in their place and I'm really happy with the end result. Without further ado, let's have a look at what we've got. Please feel free to follow me on Twitch as Ms Modeler and drop me a subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Bye!